offer is about to enter the presidential race. So the question is, is it the right time or is it too late? So let's hear what presidential candidate Andrew Yang has to say. Okay, so Wolf from CNN is asking Andrew. So he started by this breaking news asking, you know, the mayor of New York, Mike Bloomberg, is about to jump into the presidential race. So what do you think? And Andrew said, well, he's a phenomena, entrepreneurial and businessman. And he said, but it's, he think it's very tough for anyone to jump into the race at this point in time. And he has been here for over 20 times and getting to know the voters in New Hampshire. So he just wouldn't envy anyone, you know, trying to enter the race this time. And Wolf said he suspect, you know, Bloomberg was uneasy about the, the current candidates and he's worried about whether you know, these current candidates can actually beat Donald Trump. And that's why he is thinking about entering the race. And what do you think? And Andrew said, well, so the burden is on us to present a new way forward and a new vision for the country to get people excited, right? And that's what's going to help solve the problem that get Donald Trump elected in the first place. And that's what it takes to beat Donald Trump in 2020. And he has to be that candidate. And Wolf asked, so what do you think, you know, if he jumps in hypothetically, and why do you think, you know, um, you would be a better candidate than Michael Bloomberg? And Andrew Yang said um, he admired um, Michael Bloomberg, um, and they actually met, and they've been, they've been friendly, but to him, the focus should be to solve the problem that got Donald Trump elected in the first place. Because we are in the greatest economic transformation in the history of the country and we've blasted away millions of manufacturing jobs and now they, um, we're going to do that away, do away with the transportation job and, you know, call center jobs, retail jobs. And, you know, he knows Michael, understands the technology of the future, but he hasn't seen Michael present the real solutions beyond, you know, retraining those workers and at least, you know, the current retraining program is not very effective. And then we'll say, oh, he's worth billions of billions of dollars. Or maybe, although it's late, that he probably doesn't have to worry about raising money. He's got billions of money. He can self-fund the campaign. And so you can do that, right? And that should be an advantage. Is that right? So Andy said, okay, yeah, that's sure. But, you know, we already have a billionaire, meaning, you know, uh, Tom Steyer. And we already see what money can do. You know, there's a limit. And there's no substitute for, you know, meeting actual people in their homes and or the union halls and you know convey vision right and getting to know meet people over the last um several months has really helped him to you know build up his campaign the momentum so it's you know it's hard to be substituted with money so just money cannot buy the, all those efforts right and we said oh you have been very active in the campaign trails and so what what do you hear from the voters about the impeachment Okay, this is another question about impeachment. And, and we know Andrew Yang hated this question. He said, you know, he got very few questions of impeachment. In fact, whenever we talk about Donald Trump, we're not presenting a, you know, positive vision for, for, for the people. And we were losing every time we talk about Donald Trump. Like, impeachment would not move the, help move the country forward. And talking about Donald Trump is, we're losing, you know, whenever we talk about him, even in the context of impeachment. And Wolf asked, you know, um, maybe, you know, before the Iowa caucus, um, before the New Hampshire primary. So would you worry about, you know, the dominant news, the other race, and, you know, this in the late entering race of Bloomberg would become a distraction. And Andrew Young said, I do. I think, it, you know, it, it, it probably will. And... He didn't think the impeachment will eventually work. And, you know, um, yeah, so he expected to actually beat Donald Trump at the ballot, uh, um, and just, you know, in the election, instead of having an illusion of the impeachment war. So it's interesting. So, so you hear that Andrew Yang was saying, Every time we talk about Donald Trump, we're actually losing, even 
in the context of impeachment. But we kept saying, okay, so what about the impeachment actually moves forward? And Adrian said, okay, it probably wouldn't work. And, you know, I really wanted to beat him, you know, through the election. And Andrew Yang really wanted to get the focus back to beat Donald Trump if he's still there, which he expected Donald Trump to be. And if the timeline plays out where half Democratic field is in D.C. and um, listen to the testimony um, for January, and he doesn't think that's a good thing. And then Wolf continues to ask for other candidates like Elizabeth Warren rising. And so what do you think? So you can see that, you know, they only ask Andrew Yang about what do you think of this candidate? What do you think of the other candidate? That's kind of what the media is doing. And and people think you are overly, is this not over, overly optimistic. And Andrew Yang said that's not a term I, I would use. It's, it's not. And we should focus on the actual ideas and policies and not get caught in the attacks or about some someone's background or, you know, to, to him, he said it's overly optimistic because the primary funding mechanism is wealth tax. And so when the wealth tax is prime in France and Germany, you know, Denmark, Sweden, and all those European company, countries, you know, they just don't generate expected revenues. So we can't expect it will work here if it doesn't work in other countries. And so we'll ask then, what do you think of the Medicare for all? What about keeping the private uh, options? And so what is your plan closer to Warren's or Biden's? And Andrian says, you know, he takes the best the world, two worlds. And the burden has to be on the government to demonstrate to American people that, you know, any medical for plans or public plans is better alternative than the existing insurance program. And if we can actually demonstrate, then, you know, we can squeeze out private insurances over time. But if we cannot demonstrate that, then the American consumers will make the choice. So it's basically choices will be on people. But unlike Warren, you know, I do not believe everyone, every American people hate the insurance company. Some American people are actually quite attached and happy with the current uh, insurance. So let's take a look at what um, other um, people think about uh, um, micro Bloomberg running. Okay, so this is another news um, basically commenting on um, the young commenting on Bloomberg potential entrance um, and it says it's probably going to change the price of advertising. So this is written by Rachel Frazen um, from The Hill. So um, yeah, so Andrew Yang was joking about, you know, this is going to probably going to change the price of advertising. Um, and um, Mike has a very um, valuable perspective to offer, and I'm glad that he's looking at the race. And Young was then asked how he would explain to Bloomberg why he needs $1,000 a month under the entrepreneur's uh, proposed universal basic income plan. It's opt-in, Young said, it's a, he doesn't need to take it, right? Knowing Mike, he probably wouldn't. Though, you don't get to be a billionaire by turning down $1,000 a month. <laughs> And uh, multiple news outlets reported Thursday that Bloomberg was preparing to file paperwork to declare his candidates in Alabama's presidential primary. And in response, Montana Governor Steve Bullock and the campaign manager for uh, Senator Bernie Sanders opined that um, the um, the race doesn't need another billionaire. <laughs> On the contrary, Senator Elizabeth Warren um, welcomed him to the race by referring him to her calculator for billionaires to show him how much he'd pay under her proposed ultra linear tax. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Um, so apparently Warren um, liked to have, um, you know, Bloomberg in the race because Bloomberg is one of the heavily taxed um, person under her plan. And, um, and also presumably um, Bloomberg entering race would actually draw um, you know, would be getting uh, some of the voters from Biden and uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Um, okay, so what do you think? Is this a good move? I think at least it shows that, you know, Michael Bloomberg is not satisfied with the current frontrunners. He doesn't think that any of them 
would have a good chance of beating Donald Trump, and that's why he decided, well, is about um, to decide to enter a race. But um, like Andrew Yang said, this might be a little too late because you can't, money cannot buy anything, right? You can buy ads, but you cannot, you know, this money cannot replace the hard work of actually talking to, um, you know, thousands or, you know, tens of thousands of people on the campaign trail. Um, and plus, um, Michael Bloomberg also missed the the first four Democratic debates, which is actually very important, right? Because people get to know your policy. I mean, he has a name recognition. People doesn't know, need to know him um, as badly as those, you know, those other less known candidates such as Andrew Yang. But um, basically, still, people need to know your platform, right? what what your policies are, and um, how does your policy and platform compare with other candidates? Um, so in that sense, it is a little too late, and that's something money cannot buy, cannot replace. All right. Some reflection here. So I almost wish that Andrew Yang said that um, I don't think American people are ready for another billionaire from New York as their next president. Usually people would expect uh, the opposite. And the opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes math. That would have been perfect, right? And let's see what President Trump said about uh, Michael Bloomberg. So Donald Trump taunted the former New York City mayor, Michael Bloomberg, um, saying that there is nobody I'd rather run against than little Michael. Well, that's well said. So basically he's saying, I'm most happy to run against little Michael than anybody else, including Andrew Yang. Okay. And what does it is Warren think about Michael Bloomberg? Well, Warren said essentially money, like big money, should not be able to buy um election. And Warren is probably the happiest person about um this uh, Michael Bloomberg entering the race because um Bloomberg is likely to draw, you know, a lot of Biden supporters that way. And um, Biden actually said that last time he looked at the poll, like he's still far ahead. So he seemed to still have the confidence, but I don't know how long, how much longer his confidence can last. Okay, so what do you think? Do you think this is an opportunity for candidates like Andrew Yang? Comment below.